All right, guys, welcome to PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks. Thank you for taking the time out to watch the video today. The timestamps are available in the description if you want to jump straight to the bits you're interested in, along with the links to the sites where the articles have come from. Now, we're going to start off with Microsoft and Xbox because a lot of people are not going to be too happy about what I'm going to say, but this is the truth and you have to, you've got to, you've got to look at things with an open mind and read between the lines. If there was ever an indication that Microsoft will place more of its first party and exclusive games onto rival platforms, Platforms, here it is. Microsoft have suggested that Xbox is starting to reap the rewards of its increased multi-platform focus. What do you think that means? Microsoft has suggested that Xbox is starting to reap the rewards of its increased multi-platform focus. I'll tell you what it means for those that cannot read between the lines. It means that because of the success of Microsoft releasing its games on rival platforms, Microsoft has made loads of money as in profits, which means Microsoft will do it again with more games games, a bigger variety of games. And now, do you understand what Microsoft intends to do? While Microsoft already has a strong foothold in terms of games on rival platforms, thanks to Call of Duty and Minecraft, Xbox recently announced plans to bring more first-party games to PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, and it started off with four games, right? Pentiment, Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. During Microsoft's third quarter earnings call on Thursday, CEO Satya Nadella said Xbox games have been performing strongly on the PlayStation Store and he references seven games in the top 25 on the PlayStation Store, which was more than any other publisher. Nadella appeared to be referencing a recent report from Tweaktown, which found that Xbox had more first-party games amongst the PlayStation Store's top 25 best-selling games, and Sony did. The Microsoft's games that were on the PlayStation Store were Modern Warfare 3, Overwatch 2, Sea of Thieves, Fallout 4, Minecraft, Fallout 76, and Grounded, all within the top 25 best-selling games on the PlayStation Store. In comparison, Sony had five published games, but only two were from Sony PlayStation. They were MLB The Show and Destiny 2. The other three Sony published games were actually made by third-party studios, Helldivers 2, Stellar Blade, and Rise of the Ronin. Nadella goes on to say that we are committed to meeting players where they are by bringing great games to more people on more devices. What do you think that means? Meeting players where they are. If they're on PlayStation, Xbox games will be coming to PlayStation. If they're on Nintendo, Xbox games will be coming to Nintendo. The four games that Microsoft released onto other platforms was a test case scenario. They were testing the water by releasing a handful of games to see what the reception was like on other platforms. And guess what? The reception was really good because the gamers who played those games on the other platforms probably don't have and will never own an Xbox. Microsoft sees the logic. Why try and fight it? Let's just go third party publisher and release our games everywhere. Those four games have just proved what Microsoft intends to do and what they want to do going forward. How long do you give it before we hear of more games coming to rival platforms. I would give it around four to six months and we'll have another batch of older games coming to rival platforms like Nintendo and PlayStation. It's only a matter of time before we get to see older games like Gears of War and Halo games coming to rival platforms. If you ever needed confirmation of what Microsoft intends to do moving forward and take a look at the statement from Nadella. That statement was released to its board for a reason, to those shareholders for a reason. Our gaming division will start to make more money and more profit when we release our games on to other platforms. That is the message with his statement. Those games did really well on other platforms and made Microsoft money. It's all about money, not just for Microsoft, but for large corporations around the world. It's all about money. Let me know your thoughts down below about Microsoft's plans going third party and releasing its games on rival platforms. How long before we get the main Xbox first party titles on PlayStation? Let me know your thoughts down below. Okay, let's move on to some mixed news coming in about Resident Evil. Capcom may have delayed Resident Evil 9 internally, but it's set to announce another Resident Evil game to launch instead of Resident Evil 9. And this comes by way of a noted insider called Dusk Golem, who is quite popular with the Resident Evil series. A screenshot of a post on Discord by Dusk Golem, it was a track record of accurate leaks, especially about the Resident Evil series. The screenshot goes on to say the following, at this very second, I have no frame of reference of when Resident Evil 9 is being announced. It could be this summer, it could be later, I don't specifically know. I know a couple of years ago that the goal was to reveal the game this year in 2024 and aim for a 2025 release. But I've been hearing rumors that the last few months that Resident Evil 9 might have been internally delayed for one reason or another. Now, Resident Evil 9 was supposed to be some kind of open world game, completely different to how the series has been previously and how we know the game to be. So that was very exciting to learn about what that looks like. And I know a lot of gamers were looking forward to learning more about how the game world mechanics would work in an open world Resident Evil 9 game. Dusk Golem goes on to say that Capcom 
Capcom may instead announce a release of a new Resident Evil game while we wait for Resident Evil 9 to come out. Although the identity of the new Resident Evil project wasn't revealed, Dusk Golem does say actually that the, the game that will be pushed forward instead of Resident Evil 9 is pretty funny and would catch a lot of people off guard. So I wonder what kind of game that might be if people are going to think it's quite funny. This isn't the first time we've heard of a Resident Evil 9 from Dusk Golem over the past few years. In November, he said that the game was by far the biggest budget of any Resident Evil game to date and had previously claimed that Resident Evil 9 was expected to be revealed this year for a 2025 launch. He also claimed back in February that Capcom gave the green light for multiple Resident Evil games last year, some of which are remakes, unfortunately. Not that that's a bad thing, but we've had lots of remakes, so it would be nice to get some fresh new games. Capcom announced a few months back that it's working on more Resident Evil remakes, which many believe is a full revamp of the Resident Evil 5 game. With the series celebrating its 30th anniversary in 2026, there's also speculation that it could be a remake of the original Resident Evil game in the same style of the more recent releases, although nothing official has yet been confirmed by Capcom. I wonder what the delay and the holdup is with Resident Evil 9 and what Capcom are planning on releasing instead of Resident Evil 9. Although I'm getting a bit fed up with the remakes coming out on the console generation so far, a remake of the original Resident Evil game does sound very intriguing. Okay, let's move on. The upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake from Bloober Team is, as far as we know, set to arrive this year in 2024, although we haven't actually had any official confirmation of a specific release date or when it's coming onto the PlayStation 5, although that may be about to change. And this is translated by Twitter user Munro NL. Peter Bloober's team latest annual report, the studio's chief executive officer, Peter Babieno, said that we should expect the release date to be revealed very soon. We're in the final stages of work on Silent Hill 2. We expect that a release date and platforms on which the game will appear will be revealed soon. While soon doesn't mean it'll be tomorrow or next week, a quick look at the calendar shows that we're getting closer to June, where every video game publisher and developer starts talking about games, announcements, you know, it's that E3 time, isn't it, right? Which means, is it likely that we can expect the release date to be announced during the Summer Game Fest? What do you think, guys? Do you think Silent Hill 2 Remake will have a launch date announcement during the Summer Games Fest this summer? Or do you think it will happen during a Sony PlayStation rumored event taking place in May? We know Silent Hill 2 Rem Remake is coming out this year. Unless something remarkable happens and the game is delayed, the only question is, will they be present during the Summer Game Fest or a Sony showcase for a reveal, a launch reveal, maybe with a, some kind of a playable demo? Me personally, I'm going for a Silent Hill 2 Remake appearance at the PlayStation Showcase if it takes place this May. Obviously, the game is coming out towards the end of the year. Right, guys, let's Let's move on. Although I'm not a huge RPG fan, the recent release of Fallout 4 with its RPG mechanics with the PS5 next gen upgrade has got me hooked on the game. I'm only uh, a couple of hours in, about three hours in, but I am having a blast making my way around the early parts of the game. Plan to have a session today and into the weekend, but I'm having an absolute blast playing the game, which leads me on to a new PlayStation RPG game called Project Awakening. Now, Psy Games, mysterious RPG game Project Awakening, hasn't been cancelled at all. A lot of people thought it had been cancelled. However, it appears that the game is in full development. So, Psy Games, who recently released Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, first revealed the game six years ago at E3 2018 for the PlayStation 4. There have been no meaningful updates since. Although Project Awakening was briefly revealed at E3 2018, its existence was actually confirmed way back in 2016. So that's eight years ago. It was confirmed to be an open world game influenced by the likes of Dragon's Dogma and Monster Hunter. In 2019, Cygames said that PS5 version is likely if Project Awakening is still in development when the console releases. The same year, a rating board entry hinted at a demo version, however, nothing actually came out. Fast forward to this week, Gamatsu spotted Project Awakening in Cygames' most recent financial report. The RPG is now listed as a generic console title with its release date to be decided. Considering how far we are into the current generation, Project Awakening on the PS5 seems all but confirmed. However, whether the PS4 version is still on track or not is anybody's guess, but given the console's age, it's highly unlikely that a PS4 version of Project Awakening will happen. Given that the game has had the best part of six to eight years in development, I am fascinated to learn more about this game. And given my most recent experience diving back into Fallout 4, I'm ever so keen to learn more about Project Awakening. I think I'm getting hooked on the RPG stuff. So also guys, if you could recommend a good new modern RPG that I should try, let me know. I'd like to try something a bit more modern than Fallout 4. Fallout 4 still gives me the uh, the PS5 
vibes in terms of its graphical look and feel. What can you recommend that you think that I will like? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video today. Let me know your thoughts about the topics as well. But I'll catch you on the next PlayStation News, Rumors and Leaks video.